so very good morning to all the webinar viewers our topic for today is going to be osteoporosis i am i am dr uday pawar who is a spine consultant at hinduja hospital mumbai for more details on my appointments you can log on to www.spinedoctorindia.com so the topic for today is osteoporosis and there is a old adage which says that with age comes wisdom and osteoporosis as well now osteoporosis as you can see on the left side is a normal bone image uh, uh, image of a normal person's bone and you can see how good the micro architecture of the bone is as against the image on your right side which is of a patient of osteoporosis so in straighter in a normal terms osteoporosis is just like softening of your bones which translates into a reduction into quality as well as quantity of the bones now it's always a condition rather than a disease and it's uh, very much silent until you have some complications like and most commonly the complications are a spine a hip or a wrist fractures because these are more vulnerable to osteoporotic fractures and the who the world health organization recognizes some criteria for diagnosis of osteoporosis based on a bone mineral density scan or a dexa scan which we know and there are these uh, uh, these variations which we have uh, anyone who is minus uh, anyone who has a score of minus 1 and above is called as a normal and as the score starts dropping you have different grades of osteoporosis the earliest grade is bone weakness or osteopenia then is osteoporosis and then is severe osteoporosis but putting in simpler terms this is how a bone density report reads if you are anywhere between the in the red or the yellow zone it's a strict no no for any normal person you should be in the normal or the green zone so red light or any yellow region is a definite no no for patients with osteoporosis or a bone density scan now some food for thought because there is many, there are many confusions among uh, people relating to osteoporosis now osteoporosis does not equate to calcium deficiency okay so calcium is not the treatment of osteoporosis it falls in, into one of the parameters of treating osteoporosis but it is definitely not the treatment for osteoporosis because it's just a bone mineral which adds on to the micro architecture of the bone which forms actually the bone mass so bone mineral and bone mass are two different things and calcium contributes only to the bone mineral Now osteoporosis is a generalized disease so it affects throughout the bones throughout the skeleton be it the spine be it your hips everywhere where you have bones osteoporosis affects that bone and prevention by far is the only treatment for osteoporosis and hence the diagnosis is more important in treating this osteoporosis now there is something called as a peak bone mass now osteoporosis is always a play between bone formation and bone resorption so it generally by the age of 30 years bone formation always wins as against bone loss but as you cross 30 years of age bone loss starts increasing and slowly bone formation starts decreasing and that's a trade off between osteoporosis bone formation and bone loss now the problem is slowly growing in developing countries as well in india it is slowly getting to mammoth proportions and every the the unique thing about osteoporosis in india is that male osteoporosis is more common rather than females and osteoporosis in india happens at a younger age so suppose in the western population osteoporosis occurs at 70 to 80 years of age in india it is a decade earlier now the magnitude of the problem majorly it affects the spine as well as the hip joints and the third most common is the wrist joint which is affected and if you see a bar diagram it almost equates it is it is probably more higher risk than having a heart attack stroke or a breast cancer so it's more of a realistic risk of patients having osteoporosis than the rest three major killers and as i told it affects the entire skeleton of which the vertebral they have a major chunk and hip spine hip wrist and the other bones are affected also now there is a significant morbidity of associated with osteoporotic hip or vertebral fractures and if you have osteoporotic hip fracture almost 80% of the patient 80% of the subjects they are unable to carry out their activities of independent living at the end of one year okay so all this permanent disability of 
uh, unable to walk independently and unable to carry out at least one activity independently of activity of daily living which is important affects almost up to 80 percent of these patients so it's really a mammoth quality of life uh, uh, affection because of osteoporosis you can classify this as primary osteoporosis one is after menopause which happens most commonly in in females after menopause that is type 1 osteoporosis and the osteoporosis of type 2 is age related once you cross 70 80 years of age you're going to everybody of us is going to have osteoporosis be it male or be it females but the type 1 is more common in females after menopause and secondary osteoporosis is osteoporosis due to different causes apart from these causes it might be uh, due to uh, thyroid it might be due to your thyroid problem it might be due to some medic medicines which you're on which all forms into secondary osteoporosis process category and the treatment for that is different now as I told it's a reduced quality of life which which generally is the is is the fallout of osteoporosis so if you have a grandma there is an old adage says, which says that don't hug grandma too tightly because she can fracture so that's the problem of oste osteoporosis plus you have this hump which happens in these old patients they walk with a hump and that's unless proved otherwise is because of osteoporosis now the doctor generally makes a diagnosis based on your history of what complaints you have then examination and some investigations which you might order for you now there are some at risk subjects which i told you previously also patients or females who are post menopausal they are at risk if you are uh, if you are a tall white female patient then you are at high risk of having osteoporosis if your uh, uh, weight is below 60 then you have a risk of osteoporosis if you are on certain medicines like and medicines for epilepsy medicine uh, or steroid medicines then you your uh, likelihood of having an osteoporosis is higher and it presents with generalized aches and pains bone bone aches generalized tiredness and a progressive hump deformity of uh, of your back now the general clinical risk factors as we say it is as uh, as said earlier is for female female uh, group as such advanced age beyond 70 low bone mineral density hormonal deficiency white race is more prone low body weight is also considered of low body weight is uh, one of the risk factors and if you have a, uh, a family history of osteoporosis then your risk increases and obviously low calcium smoking alcohol low level of physical activity use of steroids which is more commoner is also a, a cause of a, a risk factor for osteoporosis now most often than not patients they present with severe backache after a trivial injury like suddenly they bent forward to pick up something and suddenly they had a severe catch in their back and from there onwards the pain is worse on any activities like turning in bed getting out of bed coughing standing changing positions is more commoner to have a severe onset of backache they are unable to walk because of this severe backache and sometimes it might be associated with weakness in their legs and if you have an x-ray you might see a fracture fracture of the vertebra as you can see the vertebras are squarish in nature whereas in this where it is fractured it is uh, it, it, it assumes a wedge shaped deformity of the uh, bone and there are different uh, radiographic or x-ray based diagnosis which you can have now the current gold standard of diagnosing osteoporosis comes with bone mineral density or what we call as dual energy x-ray absorptiometry or a DEXA scan now for want of anything else this is the currently the gold standard of diagnosing osteoporosis and this diagnose they take it's just like x-ray like uh, machine it's a non-invasive very low radiation and it just like having an x-ray done and the x and the what it does it calculates bone density at three main areas which is the hip the spine and your forearm and based on that they have a they, they do a calculation by which whole overall bone density can be measured and this diagnosis is the patient's bone mineral density or the record is compared with that of a young healthy individuals of same sex and then you get a record of how much your grade of osteoporosis is and once you have this this uh, osteoporosis or a t score or a bone mineral density score then there is an online 
calibration system which helps us as doctors to know the fracture risk of the patient at a, at a particular area and you have to fill in these 10 to 12 parameters and you can get a 10 year fracture risk. Now suppose in this example uh, all these parameters have been filled and the T-score, the bone density score which was done by the DEXA scan was minus 1.6 and the computer calibrates what is your 10 year fracture risk or major probability of having a fracture. In this case it was 3.8 or somewhere close to 4 percent. So the moment you have 10 to 20 percent 10 year probability of having a fracture risk you should and should have treatment for osteoporosis. Similarly this uh, this patient if you can see the 10 year fracture risk of having a major osteoporotic fracture is close to 12 percent. So as your bone density starts increase uh, the value starts decreasing you are more uh, more uh, probable to have a major osteoporotic fracture and minus 2.5 density anything lesser than minus 2.5 as in my lesser in minus lesser than minus 2.5 is a high risk for osteoporotic fractures. Now the doctor generally does a few laboratory or blood related tests which includes blood counts your calcium uh, screen as we call it and some renal function or kidney function and thyroid function test and some protein electrophoresis to know the cause of osteoporosis. Now how do you prevent it? You know what causes it but how do you prevent it and that's where a peak bone mass concept comes into picture that up to age of 30 you are always winning there is more for bone formation than bone resorption which happens in the body and that's why anybody who has to develop good bones should have the uh, should do it by the age of 30 years and that happens by having good calcium and vitamin uh, uh, supplements in your body, having good exercises, all impact activities, all, all impact exercises, they generally help improve the bone mineral density. And obviously, after 30, you got to prevent falls, or after 50, for that matter, you got to prevent your falls. Avoid surprisingly weight gain is considered to be a preventive factor for your osteoporosis. And obviously, stopping smoking and alcohol helps in going along with helping osteoporosis. All this vitamin D3 calcium preparations available in the market they generally help and quitting alcohol having good form of an exercise regimen and alcohol and smoking they generally help in preventing osteoporosis. What you cannot modify is your age, your gender, your background, the structure of your bones, the, how you are born with those are things which are not in your hands. So what's the treatment? Now generally the treatment for osteoporosis boils down to these two agents the anti-resorptive agents, the agents, medicines which stop a resorption and thus have an indirect effect on gaining bone strength or the anabolic agents which actually they prepare or develop or throw in new bones. There are drugs which if uh, taken properly they actually develop new bones for you. So it's basically a trade-off between having an anti-resorptive or bones or, or medicines which just stop the bone loss vis vis agents which actually increase or actually prepare bones and calcium is just an additive it has an added effect it's not like it's not important it just has an additive effect and almost 1200 1500 milligram elemental calcium is essential and of all these calcium preparations the most commonly used is a calcium carbonate preparation which has 40 40 percent of elemental calcium so suppose you have a 500 milligram tablet somewhere close to 200 milligram elemental calcium or the calcium which actually the body utilizes is important and that the maximum capacity calcium carbon it has. Now as I told you bisphosphonates is a group all these groups of medicines these are anti-resorptive agents they just stop the bone loss and don't develop new bones so they have a limitation to their mode of action. So what happens is this is the, the bisphosphonate groups of anti-resorptive agents they prevent bone loss or bone uh, decrease which happens with age as I told you with age bone formation starts dropping bone resorption starts increasing and these group of medicines they slow or stop the bone loss and thus has an indirect effect on the bone mineral density but because of this action the the preserved lattice or because of age whatever lattice has been preserved whatever micro architectural damage has been done mineralization takes place better in this form of uh, on in this bone and thus better mineralized bone is formed and that's how the bone density improves 
as against this group of medicines which is called as a teriparatide or a parathyroid hormone which given in bursts actually scientists have found that they increase the bone formation and this is the only drug till now which induces osteogenesis or actual bone formation so actually what happens is that it forms these trabeculations micro trabeculations and thus improve the matrix or framework on which a proper amount of calcium deposition happens uh, bone mineral deposition happens and thus your bone is str stronger because of this group of medicine now as shown your bone mineral as shown in this diagram the bone mineral density was going downhill 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 what the bone or the anti receptive agents they do is they just prevent this free fall which was happening and they just try and plateau this free fall by just reducing bone resorption and having an indirect effect as against the anabolic or the second group of medicines which I told you they actually lay down new bone and actually they can revert this graph to an upward spiral and that happens because of actual bone formation and this was a patient which uh, which after after treatment on this it was the bone mineral density gradually increased and you can see in this quantitative CT that the bone architecture and the mineral density is significantly better after treatment with parathyroid hormone so the majority take home points would be it's no longer a problem of the west it's very good or jolly good a problem of the developing countries as well as we here in India are experiencing you need a more awareness among the general population or the general public about this problem and prevention is the best treatment and that's why the concept of peak bone mass that the maximum bone formation happens until the age of 30 years after that it's always a trade-off between how much balance you have in your bank account how much bone balance you have in your account versus how much loss is going to happen and generally moms and our grandmoms are the vulnerable group thank you so much for your attention I'll be happy to take any questions if you have so Paul uh, has a question here what is a, a DXA test it's called as a DEXA test which helps us in formulating the grade of your osteoporosis it's just like an x-ray it's a non-invasive test Paul it, you just have to go and have it just like an x-ray you go in have the x-ray done x-ray sort of uh, testing done and it calculates your bone density at three important places that is the hip your spine as well as your forearm and from that you generally have a good idea of how much the overall bone density in your body is going to be and it helps us the physicians the treating doctors to help you prescribe proper medication now I hope I can answer I, I answer that question there's another question for Prol is how does osteoporosis develop so there is always a trade-off between bone formation and bone loss always and always there is some equilibrium happening between bone formation and the bone loss and thus they are e at equilibrium throughout the ages but after, up until the age of 30 the bone formation increase uh, the bone formation wins over bone loss and that's how you have new bone formation as against bone resorption but once you cross 30 slowly slowly the bone formation the bone resorption starts increasing in your body and say after 50 60 years of age and most commonly in females after uh, the uh, the menopause happens this bone or this uh, bone uh, resorption accelerates even more and that's how post menopausal women women are more prone to this uh, osteoporosis than uh, than than uh, women who have a normal normal periods so Paul again has a question is there a chance for one to develop osteoporosis if there is family history for the same definitely Paul your risk of having an osteoporosis increases if somebody in your family nearby kin has an osteoporosis say some suppose two sisters an elder and a, and a younger sister if the elder sister has an osteoporosis or has a problem due to osteoporosis the younger sister or the younger sibling is definitely at more risk of having an osteoporosis so it's correct there the chances of having uh, or the chances to develop osteoporosis are high if you have a sibling with osteoporosis diagnosed osteoporosis so can soft drinks cause a problem for my bones so in the long term yes soft drinks they have a have they interfere with the calcium metabolism and in the longer term term if you have a lot of intake of soft drinks they have a tendency to dissolve the 
the dentin which is the strongest uh, strongest structure in our body uh, 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 the dentin which is uh, from the tooth so definitely uh, a heavy intake of soft drinks in the longer term they have a propensity to increase the osteoporosis risk so the answer is yes can osteoporosis happen because of wrong setting posture so by and large the answer would be no it doesn't affect uh, uh, posture doesn't affect or doesn't increase the risk of having a, on an osteoporosis but what happens is if you have an osteoporosis sitting is generally a culprit for having uh, for the lumbar spine for the lower spine or for your lower back so that potentiates back pain and that can give rise to aches and pains in the lower back so the straight answer would be osteoporosis does not potentiate by a wrong posture so paul again has a question do bisphosphonates actually increase the risk of broken bones in the thigh or hip so there have been some reports which say that taken long term they have a propensity to have broken bones in the thigh and it's not as uh, not like a it's sort of called as a pseudo fracture or micro fracture which happens but these are mind you the risk of having that is very very minuscule but yes there have been case reports world over where people who were on these bisphosphonates on a long term they had a risk of uh, having uh, uh, fractures in their thighs so but the the uh, uh, the trade off is the trade off is very minor if the the risk is very minor but to answer your question in this, this thing is yes it it does uh, in the long term it does cause that problem we have seen that problem happening to patients who are put on bisphosphonates what is the best exercise to prevent osteoporosis another question from gammy so gammy the uh, as i told you any sort of impact activity till the age of 30 years is when uh, that is a time when actually the bone can take the strength so any sort of impact activity uh, jogging or, uh, or for that matter basketball all these impact related uh, even shuttle or badminton any sort of impact activity they help strengthen the bones up till the age of 30 so you develop your bone balance up till the age of 30 so when serving a milk a serving of milk says it contains 30% of calcium how do i know how much calcium is in that uh, serving will it help to recover so depending on age you have this recommended dietary allowance of having uh, of how much calcium intake is necessary once you've crossed say especially in females when you have more than uh, once menopause happens you have you the requirement shoots up somewhere from 1000 mg to 1500 mg and that's again an erroneous thing that i drink milk and i drink a lot of uh, uh, i drink a lot of milk related products and still my bone density is not going to increase so as in the presentation i told you calcium does not is not the treatment for osteoporosis it's just an additive effect which has on osteoporosis it just helps you get better calcium and better mineral available to the bone when you need it okay so it's not the panacea for the treatment of osteoporosis and milk and milk related products taken in in a lot of quantity they generally help but you have to drink in liters to get some amount of calcium out of that so having taking that much of milk is not practical solution so the practical solutions is testing yourself for your vitamin d3 and your calcium levels and treating accordingly by tablets whenever required but milk and dietary products they have an additive effect though now as i said the calcium uh, not everything can be absorbed from the uh, tablets only so the rest of which uh, the 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 uh, uh, whatever calcium deficiency is left you can add cover it with uh, your dietary supplements but don't don't uh, don't depend a lot on dietary supplements only fortified dietary supplements are good but get yourself checked for your vitamin d3 and calcium and if required take medicines for that weight bearing exercises as in any exercises which involves loading of the bones like when you're jogging when you're skipping when you're playing badminton when you're playing uh, uh, suppose cricket when you're playing uh, football or, or if you're playing basketball that loading which happens on the bone that increases your bone peak bone mass up till the age of 30 so these are weight bearing exercises as in which whatever increases the impact on the bones 
up till the age of 30 mind you don't you can't start it after 50 60 years and hope to improve your bone density but whatever bone balance you have achieved up till the age of 30 and that's why exercising in a younger age participating in active field games in a younger age generally helps improve your bone mass thank you paul thank you for being there and listening and that's why the peak bone mass concept is very much important in all of us the peak bone mass you have a limited time of developing peak bone mass and that's up till the age of 30 beyond that you are just living off whatever peak bone mass balance you have achieved up till the age of 30 so peak bone mass is uh, i'll tell you in simpler terms is is just like accumulating your bone balance or bone bank balance up till the age of 30 because up till the age of 30 bone formation generally wins over bone resorption or bone loss and that's why the more bone formation you have the more bone mass you have up till the age of 30 and if you have a good bone mass or bone balance up till that age then remaining it, it helps you in sailing through the through remaining of your life so it's just like having a good bone mass or a good bone bank it's just like having a good amount of stacking a good amount of money in your bank it's similar to that so it's just like having a good bone mass or a good bone bank it's just like having a good amount of stacking a good amount of money in your bank it's similar to that and that's why anybody uh, especially uh, uh, children you should encourage anybody who's there in the house how can you in increase the bone mass by having more outdoor activities uh, especially in girls and boys having outdoor activities and because of this internet age nobody generally goes out and plays and that's that's very disheartening and actually when when you go out and play that's where you have a good bone mass available for you to pull throughout your life if you have any questions you can log into my website or the hinduja hospital website or queries please write to us on info at hindujahospital.com or reach out to us on these uh, numbers which are there on your screen or you can visit uh, our site called www.spinedoctorindia.com and i'll be happy to answer your questions from any of these uh, numbers email or website Thank you all for listening. Thank you so much.